morning, everybody. My name is Seth Friend, and I uh, love going to this church. It's full of great people. I'm going to be reading the scripture with you this morning. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25 says this. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after, she, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, we come before you in this season of Advent, in this season of recognizing your first coming, Father, awaiting your second coming. Father, I know that there's many in here who are coming in with family drama through the holidays or situations. And Lord, I pray this morning uh, that we would reflect on your first coming as an infant incarnate to live among us, to live the life that we couldn't, to die the perfect death for our sins, paying for our sins, and then raising on the third day to prove that you were Lord over life, you were Lord over death, and hell nor sin can stand against you. Father, our prayer this morning is that as we listen to the preaching of your word, that you would open our ears, that you would soften our hearts, and that you would open our minds to be able to receive your word. Father, what we know not teach us, what we are not make us, and what we have not grant us. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. So much, and oh wow, I'm I'm fancy now. I got all this. Thank you, brother. Love y'all. Love y'all. Merry Christmas. Thank you for all the gifts. I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I expect them, and uh, I'm excited. Also, I'm really excited excited about, and I want to share this about um, uh, Saturday night. Saturday night at six o'clock. I guess it's an early night. If y'all can be here, that'd be great. That is uh, just a great celebration in the Lord on Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day. We'll be here, Lord willing, at 11 o'clock, 11 to 12, and then y'all can give me the presents there. Thank you so much. Uh, again, God bless you mightily. I'm so excited. Thank y'all for letting me get up here. Nick, thank y'all and all the elders in the church. Thank you for letting me get up here and preach. Uh, it really excites me, and it's a blessing in my life, and I am so excited. It is all about Jesus, and I'm thankful for y'all. I am thankful for everybody online, and most importantly, I am thankful for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and his name is what? That's why I love y'all. Y'all know it all. So uh, I want to continue that prayer. Uh, I love that man of God who prayed and his wonderful wife. We love your son more than y'all, so don't worry about it. That's just kind of the way it works. And um, But we would just pray that God would move mightily on this coming of Christmas. Lord, I just want to continue the prayer of my brother. And Lord, I don't want to come with wise and persuasive words, but I want to come with a demonstration of the spirit and power that that everything that I say and do and everything that we say and do would not rest on human wisdom but on the spirit and the power. We love you. We praise you and exalt you and thank you. Thank you. You forgive us of our sins and you throw them as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you are, will do because you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you. We praise you, exalt you, and thank you. And everybody said what? Amen and amen. And so one of the scriptures that meant a lot to me that kind of gave me a basis for this on this Matthew chapter 1, they allow me to kind of skip up to this because it is really our worship uh, before Christmas Eve. I wanted to, to say this in Ezekiel chapter 22, really means a lot to me. Uh, that book has meant a lot to me, but it's kind of the forerunner of where we're going in Matthew chapter 1. And so just really want to go there and, and let you see this uh, basis of where we're going. It says in chapter 22, verse 30 and 31, 
Verse 30 says, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. And when you understand the context of that, that book, and you understand that they were in a place outcast away from Jerusalem, away from Israel, you, you will see what they're looking for because no one can do what Jesus can do. Can I get an amen? And that's what God will do in our life. You know, that's why it's so precious that he is not just fully human, but Jesus is fully God. And it's amazing. And people look around and say, well, John, you know, he was, he was you know, half man because he was born of a woman and then God shows up in. But what we don't understand and those people that ask those questions don't really understand that Jesus was fully human. But he did something we could not do. And we see it in Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Look there at the end, but I found no one. We cannot do what Jesus can do as not just be our Savior, but be our what? Lord. Verse 31. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger. Beginning, then look what it says there. Being down on their own heads, all they have done. I am full of sin without Jesus. How about you? I am full of sin without Jesus. I bring nothing to the table. Nick talks about it all the time, but I bring nothing to the table. I want to love all of y'all better than anybody else has loved you, but guess what? I bring nothing to the table. I will just eat your food because I love you. Bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. But all that was said, <clears throat> because they know that humans can't do it. You know, you're a coach. Some of you are coaches. Some of you played. I look at you. Thank you for being much taller and bigger, stronger than me. I pray that God would trans form me into that, but thanks a lot. Uh, and, and, you know, I just cannot be what I really want to be because what I want to be is not what God called me to be. Can I get a witness from somebody on that? Did you ever want to be something that you're not? That God called you to be something different? And when I notice this, when I walk with Jesus, things change. My relationships change. Why? Because I'm in one world, what I want to be, but when I'm in God's world, I'm called what I'm supposed to be. And that's why Seth read that passage, because that is who we are. Look at that and just see it. If you want to look at where we're going and what we're trying to land today is this. Is this. If you want to look for a, a word from God that God has put on my heart to share with us, here's, the, here's kind of the idea that I'd like for you to pray about is this. The main idea is that Jesus' location doesn't mean his limitation. I'll say it again, somebody. Maybe somebody will give a witness to that. It's pretty good, right? Jesus' location doesn't mean limitation. Where was he born, saints? That, that was said with such confidence. I, I'm just, I mean, it's just, let's go get a pizza. Where was Jesus born? Yeah, not a really big city. Small. Some people say six miles away from Jerusalem. Some say seven. Some say eight. Some say, I don't know. But what I want to say to you is this. He went to a really small place, was born really outside the place. There really wasn't a lot of people going, "Woo, Hercules, Hercules. But God showed up, didn't he? I mean, there was a, like, 
a sign way out in the sky. There was this bright light. God was showing that he shows everything to the world through Jesus. He was not born in this big star and big, you know, place of all the things. When I mean star, like big star like today, like being this person on, you know, TV and movies or whatever else. But, yeah, a star did show up. And it lit the whole area so everybody could see there's something different about Jesus. So Jesus' location doesn't mean limitation. And so I know you're saying, but John, he was fully human and fully God. So he is totally different. And I would like to say amen. That's correct. You get an A for the day. But he could be something we could not. But guess what? When we're saved, we can be something that we are not. Because when Jesus shows up, he will always show out because he changes everything within us. Can I get a little witness? Merry Christmas. I pray that you get a couple gifts and you're like, oh, this is wonderful. Give it all to John. All the cash you get, you can give to me. Thank you very much. Love you. But here's what I want you to see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today, that Jesus' location doesn't mean limitation. And some of you are here, and you really don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, that's good, isn't it? Some of you are here, and we're like, I would like to be in a big city, in a big place, at a big time, with some big cash. By the way, I was thinking about y'all last night. Thank God for y'all. thinking about what God can do through you. If you're looking at this point, you're looking at what he just read, it's Jesus' location doesn't mean limitation. John, you're saying it over and over and over, and I would say, yes. Verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the what saints? The Messiah. The Messiah in Joshua if it was in Hebrew, they would say Yeshua or Joshua. And what does that word mean? What does this word mean, this Mishiach? What does it mean? It means the Lord saves. He shows up to show out because he's the only one who can change everything. And if he can change everything, he can change me and he can change you. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary, I mean, what made her so special? I mean, really. There's been a lot of research in it. I mean, you're working on your PhD, you know, you're constantly seeing, you're doing this to really churches and, and change everything. I mean, you know, you're just a smart person and, well, I'll just cheat off your papers. That's a joke, you can laugh. I mean, really, what, what is the difference in Mary? Some people will say, well, she, she became this perfect person. She did not sin after, after God spoke to her, right? We, we deal with all those, you know, theory issues. But what really was special about her? Yes, she, she did not have an intimate relationship with a, a man before that. Yes, okay. But what made her so special that she, all the deal was, she was chosen by God. And I just want to tell all of you today and everybody online, you're chosen by God. You said, but John, I'm, I'm not Mary, and I would agree. But the difference is you're chosen for what God wants to do through you to rejuvenate people and share the gospel and disciple them. Everybody in this room, Jesus said at the end of this book, in Matthew 28, he said, go make, now why would he say it at the end when he gave Jesus at the beginning? Because Jesus can only do what we can't do. We can't live a perfect life. 
Nobody, nobody has ever lived a perfect life. You say, but John, I'm scoring about a 95 in perfection. I would say, well, the passing rate is 100. So welcome to the F. You didn't make an A. But that's why Jesus shows up. And look what it says here. His mother Mary. That's the humanity side of Jesus. Fully man, fully God. But God is always greater than man. Let him be greater in your life. Best Christmas we can have is Jesus. Mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, we all know what that means, right? I'm, I'm trying to keep it generic. And y'all are like, thank you, John. We have some kids. Before they, be, before they came together, she was found to be what saints? She was, she was baptized by God the, through the Holy Spirit in a different way than she was made. And there's everybody in this room and everybody online, when you get saved, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you are totally different than the way you were born. Because when the Holy Spirit shows up on us, when the Holy Spirit takes over us, our mind, our emotions, and our will change everything. When my, when my heart lines up with my head under the Holy Spirit, Everything changes. Everything. And I pray today that you embrace the gift of God because he's not, Jesus is not just your brain. Oh, Nick is smart. So is his wife. All of y'all are much smarter than me. A D equals a diploma. That was funny. A C equals a degree. But I tell you what, God didn't just come to my mind. He came to my heart. And my heart lined up with my mind under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And when that happens, everything changes. My mind, my emotions, my will, everything changes. My will, what I think I can do. My emotions, whatever I desire or want to do. My mind, this is a concept that we can think about. Everything is changing in you today. Remember, 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 your location is not a limitation in Jesus. And God gave me that word. And I already know by the Holy Spirit, what some of you are going through. And your location is not a limitation. Jesus was born in a very small location. And the world would say he had a limitation. But when God shows up, he's the Lord over creation. Come on, somebody. That was good. God is calling you and I today to celebrate boldly Jesus. Yeah, I want you to. I'm selfish. Yeah, I want you to invite many people. I want this place. There's a, well, we've got some, uh, y'all know the people that you know, you're all connected with CSU, and you know that I'm over this building. Did y'all know that, by the way? That's scary. Roughly, there's supposed to be about 1,000 seats, really. You know, maybe 900 plus here, and there's 520 up there. Roughly this place will seat 1,520 people, but not really because some seats need worked on. I would love, I would love Saturday night for this place to be packed out. You say, but John, I, how can it be? I'm not saying it's going to be what I'm saying. It's just bring people to Jesus. And, and the best way you can bring them to Jesus, I, I, yes, I mean, some people do like the environment of celebrating, you know, Christmas Eve and all those things. But the best way you can celebrate Jesus is, is when you go to them and you share the gospel and you disciple them. Let me just tell you all something. Your location is not a limitation in Jesus. John, you've said this already seven times. I'm just trying to land the plane. 
verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. The, I mean, let's just be straight up. He did great things. He did wonderful things. But still it goes back to the Ezekiel idea that there was no way, there was nobody, there was no one who could show up and show out and make everything right. The only one who could do that is fully God and fully man. He could only answer man by being fully God. His name is Yeshua. Or in the Greek, Jesus The Lord saves. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. He's a good guy. And yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He didn't have this heart to say, look, you cheated on me. There's the evidence. You're pregnant. You know what the world says about me? John, you were, you were a sinner. Yeah, you know it. I was with you in high school. John, you weren't much in college. Yeah, I gave up God many times for my scholarship in football. And John, when you were coaching football early on here at this university and even in Philadelphia at Temple University, which is a pretty large school, you weren't really... Showing up and showing out for Jesus, and, and you are right. You are right. John, you were living with your in-laws. You're right. When you make $3,600 a year as a graduate assistant, there's not many places to live. John, you weren't really showing up for Jesus. You're, you're right. But right before my third season coaching here, and God showed up in my life in a powerful way. And I was convicted of not walking with Jesus. I was exposed. And the difference was, I was not like Joseph. I, I wasn't gonna hide my sins. Like he says there, and I let it all out and said, I need Jesus. Because I was a public disgrace of the cross. But look what he says. Yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her. What saints? Man, he's kind of a good guy, isn't it? And I don't want to public disgrace her, you know, and kind of hides the way I look as well, right? You know, I mean, we're engaged within that time. That meant you were already what? Talk to me. Somebody said it right. What would y'all say? They're married. But she's pregnant. They haven't been together privately. She's pregnant. He's like, I'm not down with that. I'm out. How many times has Jesus called some of us? And we said, I'm not with that. Man, God is so powerful. Verse 20. But after he had considered this, let me ask a question. Y'all are smart. And what body part did he consider this problem? Talk to me. Where? In what location? Would you just say? His mind. Smart. Where did God speak to him when he was asleep? Where? Where? He thought about the problem is exactly where God spoke to him. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is the very one thing in the sinful nature that I struggle with, that God's going God's to gonna speak to me in that as well. 
when football was my Lord, God spoke to me in New, New Orleans at the National Coaches Football Convention. Because what did I care about mostly? It was not Jesus. It was not my family. You weren't born yet, Lauren. Football was my go-to. And it was in the middle of being with two other coaches God began to change my heart, and I was convicted. It was in the one biggest, biggest struggle I had is right where God spoke to me. And it talked to him. The whole, you, you, know, you know it spoke to him in the mind. Look what it says. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, going back to his big, big time person in his lineage, right? David, we all know King David. If you've read parts of the Old Testament, you understand. Do not be afraid to make Mary, to take Mary home as your what? Because what is conceived in her is from who? The Holy Spirit is speaking to everybody in this room right now. And what you're called to, God has called you to show himself in that. So yes, here's our full-time pastor. But pastoring doesn't mean that he is greater in person than you. Y'all know that, right? Matthew 28 says, go make disciples of all nations. Really, in the Greek word, it's ethne. That's just our role. And everybody in this room has a role that God has called you to. So show up and show out. This is Christmas. It's not what we get, and it's not what we give. It's who we give. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son and you are to, this is so good, and you are to give him the name what? Jesus in the Greek, Joshua in the Hebrew, the Lord saves. I have seven pages. Yeah, I know the writing's, I mean, it's a little bigger because I can't see, you know, with all that treatment stuff, right? Seven pages. Am I correct back there that I gave you all a copy? Is that correct? They would say amen, seven pages. Ezekiel 22, you know, is looking for someone to stand, and I'm then I'm going to paraphrase it, and then go hit a little fort in the gap. There was no one. But because the Holy Spirit lives in you and lives in me, let the Holy Spirit stand in the gap. Let the Holy Spirit stand in the gap. John, I don't like my job. That's not what I asked. That's not what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. John, I don't like the position and the call. That's not what God is saying to you. I don't even like when you preach, John, that's really not what God's saying. Praise the Lord. Your location is not your limitation because of Jesus. Well, John, I don't live a perfect life. I, I do things wrong. I've sinned. I've done. That is why you show Jesus. 
because Jesus is the one who saves us from our sins. He is fully God. He became fully man to show you that he can rule and reign us at any time, at any place, in any situation because he is Lord somebody. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son And you are to give him the name Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew. Because he will do what? Save his people from their sins. I really want to go into this, and I'm just, I'm kind of running out of time because I, I want us to sing those two songs. But I want you to know something. He's, he's speaking to Mary, and Mary was, n was not limited when God showed up, but she was limited before God showed up because she was young. She didn't have the cash flow. Mary was limited. And if I'm correct, I need you to look this up for me, but I believe there are seven other names in Mary in Scripture. Why this Mary? What has she done to deserve it? Okay. She kept herself clean physically. And your next point, God will use you, every one of you, and he's calling you today. God does make the mysterious a mystery. Colossians 2, verses 2 through 3 says this, my goal in verse 2 in Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If you want to know what to do and where to go, and the next step is Jesus. Jesus' location was not his limitation. And you know what the word Jesus in Greek or Joshua in Hebrew you know what it means, the Lord says, verse 22, oh, this is good. And this, and this took place to fulfill what the Lord, oh, that's a, that's a little different name. The Lord, it's just another, it's a powerful word. The, the word Lord, it, this, is, this is powerful. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet and I'm going to get to the reading of the prophet, which is Isaiah. But I want you to know what the, the word Lord really means. The word Lord means this. If Jesus is your Savior, praise God. But I got another question. Is he your Lord? Because the Lord has to do with right now, doesn't it? Savior means he saved me from my sins. I know that I'm going to be with him when I die or he comes back. And I know that I'm going with him. But I want you to know that Jesus is not just your Savior. He is your Lord. And here's what the Lord is, means. It really means this, absolute ownership. Does Jesus have absolute ownership in your life? Because he is Lord. Yes, he is your Savior. But he's your Lord. Oh, we running out of time. Can you come up and play over me cause, and play that song? Because we're getting ready to sing it. That song has ministered to my heart. Got so, it's just like you, bro. I know you got all these things you want to say, like this, the Holy Spirit's just pouring in you, and, you know, and fully human. We got limited time. But the Holy Spirit is in us.
to make us fully anointed. Every one of you that are saved, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now show up, show out. You're not limited by your location. You're not limited by your job. You're not limited by your degrees. You're not limited by your finances. Nobody in this room that's born again and saved and Jesus is your Lord, nobody's limited. Because look what it says. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. Mary was a virgin. She gave her heart, her heart to Jesus and it was exposed physically. We, I'm getting ready to ask some of us, we need to go ahead and pray for the people we're going to encounter. You know what's coming up. Y'all know. You know. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him what? Talk to me. By the way, there's some really big saints right there too that are super knowledgeable. How many times is the word Emmanuel moved, uh, said in Scripture? You want to know how many times? Anybody want to take a guess? one time you were saved and there's one time he is Lord so let him show up and show out which means God what I can't hear you God what God is with you today I'm asking you to come pray I'm asking you to come up here and pray and let's just go to God in physical Mary went to she let God take over the physical and God shows up in the physical and the spiritual in Jesus Christ and God is calling you today. You're here physically. Let him be Lord spiritually. Your mind, your emotions, and your will. What do you want to do? Let God tell you. I don't want to do it. I didn't ask that question. You can express it, but you can't let it lead you. God with us. He's the Savior. When Joseph woke up, remember because he was thinking about the problem and God showed up to him and spoke to him where he was thinking. I was a football coach, and I wasn't willing to give it up, and God showed up when I was at the football clinic in New Orleans in 1993 as a coach here, and God shows up and says, God's not calling you to that, and I fought it till 1999. But God changed me all the way through. I started preaching here in 97. I started preaching and God started taking it over. I took a step. That word is a lamp into my, talk to me. So I took a step and a light into my what? 99, I gave up coaching football here. And even when I was offered an assistant athletic director here, I was like, nah. Even when I was offered the head coaching football job at North Greenville, I was like, nah. Twice, I told y'all that. Even all the way out in Kansas, the big Juco, head football. Yeah, I was like, nah. All in the beginning of 1999. And I started seminary in the fall of 99 because when I gave up what I wanted, I surrendered my mind and my emotions and my will to the Lord and he changes and he's changing you today because guess what there ain't nobody around us reading the Bible there's nobody just surrendering their life to Jesus Christ there's not many people doing that but God called you you're anointed you're anointed and Jesus he is fully 
man and human and fully God. Let him take over your humanity. You say, John, I'm saved. I, I know that. Let him be your Lord. And I got to land this plane. Oh, sorry. Verse 23. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name what? Your location is not your limitation. Now let Jesus show up. What's your limitation prayer today? What's your lordship prayer today? Lordship is about your personal life and your personal walk. Your Savior, that's who Jesus is, did for you when he saved you. Come on, what does Jesus need to be Lord in your life? Or who, who, who else in the family? Who else in the friend? Who else in the job? What's the big decision, brah? Come on, somebody. This is Summit. We're going to let Jesus be Lord. I'm excited about this song you get ready to sing. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we got some lordship questions today. And I'm asking people to come right now in the middle of the prayer. Come on down here and pray. Where's Jesus need to do some lordship? I, I, don't, I don't know, but I know he will do it. I know he will do the lordship issues. I know he will do it. So I ask today, Lord, there's some people need to come up. Jesus be Lord over this situation. Jesus needs the Lord over who I'm dating or in my marriage or over my children or over my job. Come on. Come on, God. We're asking you. This is the greatest gift. Christmas, you show up to live the life that we can't live and die the punishment that we deserve. You show up, God, I pray for this church to have revival. I pray for the Lordship in our life, the Lordship in our life. Come on. Lord, who's going to come up right now? I already see one. Where do we need Jesus to be Lord in our lives, in our job, in our finances, in our friends? How about a big decision we got? How about when you just don't feel like doing something or I, I don't want to take on this or I, I'm just not happy with where I am. How about Jesus, just show up as Lord. And for everybody here and online, I want to ask, you need a Savior. Some people in here need a Savior. Some people online need a Savior. Confess right now that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Surrender your life to him. Let him be Lord. Let him be Lord. And start with letting him be your Savior. So, Father, will they tell us what they need prayer for? Might be a lordship issue. Are there people here that and online that need a salvation issue? God, please flood this place with the greatest gift of, of Jesus. Let us live out the Merry Christmas that we received and the Lord willing we will celebrate and that's why I said Lord willing because that's the here and now and where do we didn't need to let Jesus be Lord who are we going to pray for Lord let us come forward right now not be ashamed not worry not be, let us come forward right now bring some people with us around us and let's pray in the name of Jesus we pray